So the man who set fire to a Seattle warehouse in 1995 caused the deaths of four firefighters. He is set to be released from prison tomorrow. Martin Pang intentionally set the fire so he could collect insurance money. And this was, if you remember, a very significant moment in Seattle history because not only did we lose four firefighters, it also changed the way that firefighting is done here. So joining us now to talk about the significance of this case and uh, you know how we've changed is our former King 5 investigator Linda Byron. Thank you so much for being here. It's great to be here. Yeah, I know you have a lot of interesting details to share yeah. about the case mm -hmm. and we'll get to the, the changes that sure. occurred in a moment. But you actually went to Brazil because he fled there thinking he wouldn't have to be, you know, accountable if he was there. That's right. He he told me he didn't think he could be extradited. So okay. he fled to Brazil. Um, I wanted to get an interview with him. His lawyer was uh, someone that I knew and I called him up and I said, someone's going to get this interview. I want it to be me. And then I went into my boss and I said, I booked a flight uh, to Brazil. I'm going to be sitting next to John Henry Brown, the lawyer. And by the time we get to Rio, he is going to agree to convince his client to talk to me. Uh, and it was dare to be lucky, I guess. Just, you know, I was hopeful, mm -hmm. um, but I wasn't completely convinced. Um, but I did get to Brazil and was able to get into the prison to talk to Martin Pang after nine days of mm -hmm. sitting at the prison steps day after day after day, finally got in. And, um, and I asked him about how he felt when he learned that those firefighters were dead. When I heard about the four deaths of the firemen, uh, I cried. You know, uh, I think of my family and what would have happened in, in those shoes. When I finally got up the, uh, the courage inside to go down and see the building, it was like saying goodbye to uh, a sibling. Mm -hmm. And I also said a prayer for the firemen and their families. Did you feel like he was sincerely remorseful when you were talking to him? He seemed like he didn't have a care in the world. He seemed a little nonchalant, um, but you know, he had been vilified. Mm -hmm. He was a demon. Everyone in Seattle was thinking he's guilty, he fled. Um, we knew that he had told his ex-wife that he was going to do this. The firefighters walked into a trap because this was an arson, they didn't know it, mm -hmm. and yet there were accelerants used and they didn't know the layout of the building. It was it was absolutely horrific. And there was like a dark cloud hanging over the city for a long, long time. This happened, you know, in December before Christmas. And I know we have a clip from another interview. And, and can you set us up with this one? Sure. So I asked him, why Brazil? Why did you flee of all places to South America? And here's what he said. Why Brazil? Well, uh, there's supposed to be no extradition from Brazil, and I figured that uh, the dust would settle, and the truth would come out, mm -hmm. and uh, then I could go back. Basically, I was running scared because uh, I was being railroaded, still am. The truth of what? The truth. Well, Martin Pang at that time was proclaiming that he was innocent, and he was saying, I only left because everyone had already decided that I was guilty and it was a witch hunt, so I had to get out, and now I'm going to prove my innocence. And of course, mm -hmm. as we know, he's guilty. He came back, he pled guilty, and um, went into court and said he was sorry. How did he get from Brazil back to Washington? There was a huge extradition battle. So he was charged with felony murder. Now, felony murder in Washington means that people die when you have committed a different crime. So it's murder that wasn't intentional. In Brazil, that crime doesn't exist. And Brazil said, no, we're not sending him back. Mm -hmm. So it went to the State Department. There was a big fight. And eventually, the prosecutors charged him with arson. So when he came back, he was extradited on arson charges. But they had to agree that they were not going to try to go for a life sentence or some oh. kind of extra, you know, even mm -hmm. a capital murder. Okay, and one thing, you know, I wasn't here when this happened, I was living somewhere mm -hmm. else, but people have said this really did change the way firefighting happens because of what happened in this case. Tell us about that. Well, first of all, this should have been the easiest fire in the world to fight. They were told when it was going to happen. Uh, Martin Pang's ex-wife said it's going to happen in this building. Martin's going to do it. He's going to do it around this time. He's going to set the fire deep inside where the fire will be well underway and they won't be able to put it out when they show up. None of that information got to the firefighters. Oh. They show up. They don't know this, the um, state of the building. They don't know the layout of the building. 
They don't know that it's an arson where accelerants were probably being used. Um, unfortunately, the incident commander didn't even realize that there was a basement. So the firefighters were sent in on that top oh. floor. They're fighting the fire. They thought the, they had the fire about out. And at that point, a big rush of smoke and heat and the floor collapses. And mm -hmm. some of them get out and some of them don't. Wow. So as a result, to answer your question, okay. They no longer go into abandoned buildings to try to save them unless they believe that they have to save a life. Mm -hmm. right. Seattle was one of the few cities doing that at that time, aggressively mm -hmm. going into these abandoned buildings, especially a building that's 90 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. right. They now provide information on any arson threat. They do a pre-fire plan, so the layouts of the buildings are provided. Mm -hmm. The safety officer has to go do his own or her own assessment of the fire scene, so they would have known about that right. basement. Mm -hmm. A lot of changes. Yeah. Wow. What significance it's had on the city. I mean, we've even heard from firefighters mm -hmm. who still remember that, of course, obviously, mm -hmm. and just what an impact it's had on the city. Yeah. All well, right. Firefighters are our heroes, yeah. and, and we lost four of them trying to, to do their job. Yeah. All right. Being released Thank tomorrow, you. we appreciate your perspective, you know, shedding light on this event that's happening. Thank you so much. Linda Byron, former King 5 investigative mm -hmm. reporter. It's nice to be back. Yeah, good to have you. Thanks.